Welcome to Tour Tuesday, everyone. It's good to see you. It's February and it's cold outside, but we're here to talk about cruising. Um, that will certainly help get us yes. through the next few weeks of, of this winter. Let me just mute here so we don't get that feedback. Sorry about that. I'm still getting that feedback. All right. Well, um, I see lots of tour directors on the call. Are you guys hearing the feedback or is it just me? All right, I'm hoping that you don't Sandy, hear it. It yes. means that she came on twice. She has to she has to come out of one of them. Roseanne's on twice. If she closes one of them, she, it won't. we won't hear it. You got it, you got it. All right, so just double check. Everybody should be on mute anyway, and that will help. So um, that, it looks like everybody's on mute now. In fact, I'm gonna hit mute all. There we go, excellent. So um, we have lots to do today. First, I want to introduce some uh, famous or infamous people on the call today um, that are gonna help us answer questions and um, talk about these wonderful tours. We'll first talk, uh, I'll introduce the star staff. Uh, we have Chris Korkos here today. Go ahead and wave, yes, there she is. I'm gonna pin her to the top, so that's Chris. And if you call and book one of these wonderful trips, Chris will be the one that you get to talk to. Um, and she's fantastic. She knows all about our cruises and um, she's gonna do a great job for all of you. Um, then we have some tour directors. Some of these tour directors will actually even be on your cruises that we're talking about today. We have, and I'm gonna go from top, to the top of my screen down, we have Jean Gray. There he is waving to you. Gene um, is one of our tour directors and he is escorting a cruise. We have Betty Barr here with us today. Jane Estes here with us today. Hello. Let's see, we have Martha Costa. Martha's escorting a couple of our cruises. There she is. Uh, let's see who else I see. Um, mm -mm -mm. I saw more people before. I, I know Corinne is on the call. We don't see her, but I think that might be it for our tour director. So, oh, I thought Bobby Flesher was on the call. So she might've popped off or maybe she's coming back. Um, so if you see somebody that you recognize, um, wave to them. And um, if we need to ask questions, we will. So uh, that'll be great. So we're gonna talk about Carnival Cruise Lines and I'll introduce our special guest in a second. And of course, I'm going to share my screen with you like I always do. And I thought we would just kick it off with why cruise with Star, right? Simple question, important answer. Every cruise vacation package from Star includes a fantastic itinerary with popular ports of call at a great value. That's what we look for to give you. We look for a great itinerary uh, at a, a date with a price that's uh, value oriented and um, ships that you will enjoy, okay? All shipboard meals are included. On all of our cruises, all shipboard meals are included. And that's great. Even from when lunch on the first day, through breakfast on the last day. And then we always give you an onboard credit of some sort. And that onboard credit is good for the first and second passenger. And um, you can use that, that money while you're on, on board on the ship. You can use it for um, snacks. You can use it for photos. You can use it for shore excursions, whatever you would like. Of course, with 15 people or more, we always include a tour director. Why do we include a tour director? Um, because you always have help when you need it. And that tour director is there to help you or just to enhance your vacation in any way. Okay, we always include baggage handling and related gratuities for the Steve, the sky caps basically, um, or the, the stevedores, whoever handles your luggage. We include motor coach, motor coach transportation between the pier and the airport, as well as STARS local departure points. And then when flights are needed, we include airfare and airport transfers. And then of course, 
The highlight is you get to travel with other friendly star travelers. So you're not just going on vacation by yourself. You'll be with other star travelers. Certainly you can be by yourself if you'd like, um, but there's always people to talk to when you travel with star. I would like to introduce um, a very important lady. Let me just stop sharing here so you can all see her and I will pin her to the top. Um, Grace Ambrosia is our Carnival Cruise Lines um, Business Development Director. And that means that she is the person that we talk to. She is our you know, boots on the ground, our major helper, our expert through anything related to Carnival Cruise Lines. And she's been doing it for us for a really long time. So we have a nice relationship with her. This is her second time being featured on Tour Tuesday. So she's kind of like an expert on, on Tour Tuesday as well as Carnival. Um, so uh, we're glad to have her with us today. And I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit further and, and talk a little about, about what you do, Grace. Thank you, Sandy. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to learn a little bit about the great programs that we have with Star Tours. Um, as Sandy said, I'd, I'd be a little bit remiss to let you know, I've actually been with Carnival for 21 years. So we've been working together a very, very long time. And as Sandy said, we do have a really great relationship. They're a great partner and we love to support them. And just the fact that you're here tonight supporting um, Star Tours really means a lot as well. We uh, definitely like to highlight our travel partners. Um, and we really truly believe that they are the best resource for booking your carnival cruise. So thank you, Sandy, for having me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being so, here. On behalf of Carnival, I, I do again want to thank you for considering even taking a Carnival cruise for your vacation. Um, you know, just to kind of give you a little synopsis of Carnival, you're really choosing a fun, unforgettable vacation experience. And to be honest with you, um, you know, maybe we have some first time cruisers tonight. Maybe we have some first or, or new to Carnival Cruise Line. Um, so again, so welcome. There's a lot of information. Um, there's a lot of slides Sandy put together. She did a great job. Um, so just to kind of kick it off and tell you a little bit about Carnival, you can see on the screen that there's a lot of information there. Um, we have been in business since 1972. We are celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. So we have a lot of really exciting things happening. Um, you know, in complete transparency, it's, it's been a really interesting couple of years. Um, and just to let you know, we are actually sailing out of 10 U.S. year-round home ports. Um, and by March, we will reserve service in all of those 10 U.S. home ports. And then with the opening of the Alaska season in May, we will actually have our entire fleet back sailing within 10 months of our restart. So it's really a great time. Um, you know, to be in our industry, to talk about cruising, now's a great time to book. Um, so we'll kind of move through it. I know that there's probably a lot of questions about protocols. Um, so I, I'm going to preface everything I say by saying for the most up-to-date information um, on our sailing protocols, we have a great page called Have Fun, Be Safe. It's on Carnival Cruises, and you can actually get on there yourself at any time. We make updates constantly to the site um, to really better just to give you all the most current information on our protocols um, and what we have in place. And actually, Sandy, I heard earlier, I think today that the CDC lowered um, their cruise level down to um, down a notch. So we're really awesome. excited. You know, we, we put a lot of these protocols in place and they are working. And as I said, um, our entire fleet will be back in the waters in less than 10 months of us for return to service. So that's a great testament um, to what we're doing on board to keep our guests, our crew and everyone safe. So again, the information that I'm going to share with you is current as of today. Again, things can change, um, change for the better. So make sure to 
check out the uh, Have Fun, Be Safe page. And if you don't know where it is, we can definitely walk you through and show you where to find that as well. So first and foremost, um, Carnival is at offering vaccinated cruises for our guests um, who have received their final dose of an approved COVID-19 vaccine. And that's within um, at least 14 days prior to sailing. So uh, not counting embarkation days, so it's actually 15 days. You need to have a hard copy of your vaccination card with you. We're not um, accepting photocopies or photos of that. Um, also, our testing standards, we did announce just recently that until further notice that we would be operating vaccinated cruises with our, our enhanced protocols. Um, so we, all of our ships follow the same guidelines so that we can maintain the confidence um, of our guests and the destinations that we visit um, to deliver great itineraries and a guest experience on board. Um, and again, as the situation's evolving, our protocols are changing. Um, so you just make sure that you're kind of up to date on what's been happening. Um, with the third bullet point that we have talks um, about face mask. So all guests that are um, age two and above are required to wear face masks um, at all times while they're indoors, except while you're eating and drinking, um, while you're obviously in your own stateroom, and when you're outdoors and can't social distance. So um, very similar to, you know, probably what you've been doing now. It's just an extra layer of protection. Um, also, just so you know, uh, with embarkation and debarkation, we do ask that guests wear their face mask during that entire process. Also, um, during show, some carnival approved shore excursions, we're asking you to do that as well. Um, when guests are going ashore, we just ask that, you know, you do follow the guidelines, any local guidance that they have in place for masking as well and physical distancing. Um, and then you'll most likely have a, a tour director with you to kind of keep you in the loop of that as well. Um, and then our, our shoreside experience, uh, and destination requirements. Again, we just kind of follow the guidance of the different itineraries and the different ports that we'll be visiting on your sailing. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> let's talk <laughs> about the fun stuff. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I do wanna talk about the fun stuff and, um, but I know there's probably some questions related to the, you know, have fun, be safe, program or protocol, um, sure. if you will. Um, I'm going to open it up. You have this carnival expert here um, that is able to answer any of your questions. So does anybody have any questions about these protocols before um, we move on? I see Jean has a question. So go ahead, Jean. Hi, thank you, Grace. Uh, nice to meet you and thank, thank you. you for being with us tonight. Um, one of the tour directors for STAR, I'm proud to be, of course. Um, I have a question about the testing that we have to do prior to boarding. Is that still a protocol of Star of uh, Carnival? It is. So fully vaccinated guests um, need to, I'm just double checking, um, two days prior of sailing. And does, does Carnival help us get those tests or are we completely on our own for that? Um, well, we have a couple of recommended places that you can secure those tests. Um, there's a whole list of tests that are accepted. Um, some of them are um, home tests with a, a tele, a medic tele um, experience that they can print out for you to show a, no, a negative test. Um, we are currently beta testing a program that's called uh, Verify. It's only on a couple of ships right now that we have. Um, a, a free health application that allows vaccinated guests to submit to like all their pre-required testing, check-in and everything at the port. So we are in the process of, of trying to um, make that whole process a little bit easier. And as I said, things are changing. I mean, so quickly, you know, we, we kind of just launched this program and we're in beta test. So hopefully it will, it will work well and we can roll it out to the rest of the fleet. And, um, you know, um... Our first cruise, I think, departs July 31st. Um, so we have, you know, a good five, five and a half months um, for, you know, protocols to, or processes to A, improve, um, 
protocols will hopefully change for the better. Of course, you know, there's always chances that we could roll backwards, but let's think positive. Um, so whatever is in place today will likely change in some form or fashion. So like Grace, Grace said, you know, you, we want you to keep an eye on the have fun, be safe page on the carnival website, because to be honest, it's going to be very hard for us to keep up with every one of you to tell you when things change. So um, that's something that we leave to you. We can, you know, guide you if you call us, if we're in touch, but, you know, Chris, Christine will give you the lowdown when you book, but after you book, it's kind of your responsibility to keep track of anything that's happening. Um, so, you know, if right now, you know, they're requiring vaccinations, maybe they'll remind me, Grace, do you require a booster right now? No, it's recommended, but right. So uh, it could be that they recommend a booster, you know, by July 31st, we don't know. So just keep all these things in mind that um, it can change. And we want you um, to be able to keep, keep up with all of the information as well. Yeah. And Sydney, I'll just add one more thing. Um, also, you know, there's a lot of you on tonight. So everyone seems to be quite savvy on getting on a Zoom call. Just so you know, when you do make your booking with Carnival um, in, an, in an effort to help manage um, the vaccinated sailings um, and to kind of take that pressure off of Sandy and the team, we actually ask you just to update and complete all your pre- cruise information to make sure we have all of your current information that we can communicate directly with you. Um, and as of right now, we ask you to complete something that's called um, a pre-cruise uh, vaccine attestation that basically just asks, you know, a couple of questions um, and we update your profile. And then if there's any changes or anything happening that we require, um, we actually communicate with you directly. Again, to kind of take that off the shoulders of our travel partners because things are changing so quickly. So we wanna make sure that you're well prepared to come on your sailing. And then of course, if there are questions, you know, you need just to reach out and we can, you know, help answer, kind of direct you of where to look for the answer. That's great. So, so do you, when we birth the cabins, Grace, is that when you take control of the email address and, and start to reach out if there's any changes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll for, ask, we'll, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to sort of restate that. So when you all make your reservation with Chris, um, she will put your email address in the carnival system and then you will be alerted of any changes. Yeah. So again, it's kind of, it's on, it's your responsibility to fill out your attestation because obviously our friends at star can't speak for you and fill out this, this very important document that we require. Um, and then obviously we make sure that you have all of your documents that you require for, for embarkation. Excellent. Thank you. Any other yeah. questions? I see a hand, Kathleen, you just have to unmute yourself. There we go. I'm an, a new carnival. Thank you. I'm a platinum NCL person. That's you, okay. We still like you. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned about masking. Is that for vaccinated? That's yeah. for everyone. That's for everyone. At right all now. times? Yes, unless you can socially distance outside, you know, on the decks and stuff. But as of right now, today, that's what we're, that we have as a protocol in place that may change. But today, that's what it is. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Does anybody have any other questions before we move on? It's like you still have to get tested even if you have been vaccinated. Yes. Yes. As okay. of right now, okay. that is yes. a requirement. The, within, the, the test results uh, have to be within 14 days, right? Or the two days before you board. Right. Yeah. Two, two days prior to your boarding. The, okay. uh, the vaccination needs to be complete 
within the 14 days, not including embarkation. That's where that 14 day is. Oh, okay. So the vaccination, if we finished vaccination longer before that 14 days, what happened? You're good. You're still good? Okay. You're good. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I you. mean, we're, we really just, you know, we want to operate safe mm -hmm. cruises. Um, if you haven't sailed yet, kind of post this COVID world that we that we're living in. Um, it seems, you know, like there's this, these new protocols, but I promise once you get on board, you're going to have a phenomenal time. Our guest satisfaction rating is so high. Um, and again, as I said, like we're continuing to roll out our ships and we're, you know, people are sailing, people are ready to go on vacation. Yeah. Yep. And that's why you're here, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. We're going to jump into talking about the specific cruise. Oh, Roseanne has a quick question. Go ahead, Roseanne. What is considered a hard cut? Oh, wait a minute. I've got to, I've got to. You, you muted the wrong one. You can also post your questions in the chat if you'd like. Uh, what, what is considered, is it still happening? Yeah, but we can hear you, go ahead. What is considered hard copy? Oh, great, of the vaccine card, I believe you're asking. Okay, if you don't have the card and you have a paper copy from the state of New Jersey with their seal, is that acceptable? Yes, I believe so. And we can, you know, make sure we get out the information on the have fun, be safe to, there's a whole listing just for the purpose of this call. I didn't go through the whole thing um, of exactly what we have, but yes, there's, there's different ways to produce your, your paper copy of, of your vaccination. This copy has all three, the first two vaccines and then the booster. Yeah. It has, that's, okay. That's all we need. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. And I think the reason that we just ask for it not to be on your, on your phone is because we, we can't always corroborate that it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Not that understand. anyone would do that. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you never I understand you have to protect, protect yourself. Yeah. And we want to protect our crew and our passengers and guests. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to jump right into um, talking about, we'll first start with the Eastern Caribbean. And um, this ship uh, is the Carnival Legend. So this is a fabulous itinerary, nine days, eight nights. Um, and uh, it's in mid-October. So it's a lovely time of year uh, to get away in the fall. And um, you can see the prices there. Um, do you want to tell us about sort of the, sh the experience of the legend itself? Sure. Right? Sure, I'd be happy to. So we do have quite a few ships that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, luckily, we have a couple of sailings on the legend. So I'll just kind of tell you once about her. Um, she's a beautiful ship, the Carnival Legend. She was actually inaugurated in August of 2002. Um, she is part of the spirit class. She's 88,500 tons. Um, her guest capacity is about 2000 guests. Obviously, again, with these protocols and different things that we have in place, we have different percentages for our guests to make sure everyone's has nice and spaced out on board. Um, but this ship is really beautiful. Now, as I said, she was inaugurated in 2002, but she's been in dry dock quite a few times. Her most recent dry dock was August of 2021. So she's had a lot of enhancements, um, some hotel maintenance. We also um, painted the hull of the ship, that red, white, and blue. So you're gonna start to see that through a lot of the Carnival vessels. Um, but the thing about Carnival is that we um, consider everyone to be a Carnival guest, whether you've, you've cruised before or you've done land before, you know, our goal is for you to come on board and for us to exceed your expectation. Um, we offer something for everyone on board. Uh, I will say that there's a lot to do um, and it's pretty consistent throughout the entire fleet with a couple little modifications on some different ships where we try some new stuff. 
Um, for example, on our new ship, the Mardi Gras, we have a roller coaster and that's the only ship we have a roller coaster on. Um, but for the most part, we like to have the consistency throughout the entire fleet. Um, we have a phenomenal service. That's one thing that we always hear is that how wonderful our staff is and how they treat you. And they, they'll address you by name. They'll know what you like. And that's something really that you don't see on um, a bigger cruise line, like, like a carnival, a contemporary cruise. Um, there's something for everyone. If you like dining and you like the culinary experience, we have done so much. And we're gonna just highlight a couple of things that we have um, on the legend. But again, a lot of this is um, very consistent fleet wide. One thing that we've added, and we constantly ask our guests, what, what do you want? What, what do you like? What, what can we do to make this experience better? And we take that feedback and we run with it. So one of the new um, enhancements that we have on the legend is uh, the bonsai sushi. Um, it's zen-like simplicity. It's really a full service sushi restaurant. It features a wide array of Asian inspired delicacies. It's a beautiful beautiful setup, lots of variety to choose from. All of our ships have steakhouse. This is a, an additional cost, but it is very nominal. It is a dining experience when you come. So if, again, if you, if you like to eat, you like to try something new, try something different, it is such an elevated experience. And what you you get for such a small amount, um, a, a, a small upcharge for here. But it's, we ask you to block off a couple of hours. It's phenomenal. Something fun that we've added again fleet wide is Guy's Burger Joint. Um, so we partnered with Guy Fieri quite a few years back. Um, here at Guy's Burger Joint, we serve complimentary burgers and hand fry. Um, hand fries from Guy Fieri. So he created this entire array for us on board and it's fleet wide and it's complimentary. If you've ever eaten at a Guy's restaurant, um, you'll see like burgers are $18. You can have as many as you want. We have the most amazing fixings bar as well. It's a really, really great experience. Um, Blue Iguana Cantina, uh, so that's something again that we have fleet wide. It's uh, a complimentary freshly made burritos, uh, uh, tacos. We have homemade tortilla chips. We serve breakfast there. Again, just something for everyone on board. Then we have something again, you know, if you want to just try something different, chef's table. It's a VIP dining experience with very um, exclusive creations. And they're typically in unusual type uh, settings for cruise dining. So for example, we might have you in the library having dinner and having food pairings in, for this VIP experience. Then also we have on all our ships, Alito Marketplace, which is a variety um, casual a setting with a little bit of everything for everyone. Um, and it, we have actually so many more dining options, but that's just a little taste of what you can expect on board the legend. All of our ships have comedy clubs. Um, so we have Punchline or Comedy Club. It's onboard performances. We fly in different comedians. Uh, they come in and out during the various times of the sailing. Uh, we typically have family-friendly shows. We kind of have an adult-only show. It's different. So you can go every night and see something. And again, that's complimentary. Playlist Productions is phenomenal. So this is something else that's complimentary on board. Um, you know, when was the last time that you got to go see a show? Probably quite some time, right? With everything that we've been going through. So how great would it be just to have a beautiful dinner and then maybe go watch the show? Every night we have different entertainment and variety um, of public spaces throughout the ship. There's always going to be music playing. There's going to be dancing. There's going to be some type of entertainment. We always have live, live music, not, not, baked in music. So that's something else that we have. But um, Playlist Productions is um, something new that we had. It, again, it's throughout the whole fleet. There is, a, a, depending how long the sailing is, there'll be a couple of different um, Playlist Productions throughout the sailing. So just for an example, a couple of the, the shows that we have is 80s to the max. We also have a show called um, Heart and Soul, Getaway Islands, 88 Keys. It's very creative what we do and we try to have a lot of guest participation. It's so much fun. Um, 
we are a family friendly cruise line. So there will be a lot of things for families to do on board. But we know that, you know, even families, sometimes mom and dad need to get away. <laughs> Guest sailing without children uh, need a space for adults only. So we have complimentary zones on board every one of our ship called Serenity. There's a beautiful pool. Some ships even have waterfalls. Some have, you know, different amenities. But typically it is this great setup where it's 21 and over. No children are allowed. We have beverage service available. Typically we have like late lunch service available. You can go hang out there all day. Um, it's a great, great retreat for our adults. We also have um, some of our, majority of our ships do, but the legend also has this retractable roof. So depending on where you're going, whether, you know, if it's a little overcast or a little chilly, we can close the roof. You can still go swimming, go in your, the whirlpools, hang out still enjoy being outside on the deck. Um, and then, as I said, we do carry a lot of families on board. So we do have waterworks. Um, it's a great area. You know, it's for the young and young at heart. There's no age restrictions there. Um, we have some great water slides. One on the legend is called the Green Thunder water slide, which is a little scary for me, but I've done it. Um, we have the twisting water slides. We have a a uh, little spray park. We have mini racers, power drenchers, 150 gallon dump bucket up there. So there's always, you know, there's always something going on at Carnival, um, which is so nice because you're going to find areas of the ship that really speak to you. Um, you know, and it sounds like so much fun and like there's always something happening. When I first started Carnival, I remember saying, you always know where the fun is. So if you're looking for fun, you're going to find it on board. Um, we also have some really great spaces just to kind of chill and relax and read and listen to jazz music too. So it's, there's really, really something for everyone. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about some of the, I, I promise I won't go into that big description on everyone. I can keep talking. Uh, it's so exciting. Um, so the itinerary is great. We leave from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, there's two fun days at sea. And, you know, whether you're going on vacation to really experience the ship and the cruising or you're looking for the ports, you know, all of these itineraries have a little bit of both on these. So it's not packed with a lot, a lot of fun days at sea and sea days. Um, they're pretty port intensive. So this is great. You have two fun days at sea. We visit Princess Keys. Uh, Grand Turk, Amber Cove, two more fun days at sea, and then back to Baltimore. Um, Princess Keys is a really beautiful destination. It's one of these private islands that we have in the Bahamas. Uh, obviously, very beach driven, very relaxing. There's a lot to do here. Um, there's a barbecue lunch that we have. We also have uh, some nice areas for adults only. We have kid areas. There's uh, the, the adults only retreat area, lots of shore excursions as well. So if you wanna go kayaking or snorkeling, there's glass bottom boats excursions, swimming with the stingrays, uh, beach kayaking, ocean kayaking, I'm sorry. And of course the beach is there too. And Grand Turk, there we go. Located in the Turks and Caicos. Um, this is a really beautiful port. Um, it was purpose built. So you step off the ship and you can just walk down the pier and you are on the beach. It is so spectacular. It is that aqua blue water, the sugar sand beach. You can literally just, as I said, step off the ship, throw your bag down, grab a chair and start swimming. It is spectacular. You'll have beautiful pictures of you in the ocean with the carnival legend behind you. Um, also, there is a beautiful Margaritaville there. There's a big, beautiful meandering pool. Um, and of course, there's lots to do as far as excursions. Um, so you can get off and literally just hang out, go shopping, relax, swim, get a tan, or you can be super active and take some nice excursions as well. And very similar to um, what I mentioned in Princess Keys, lots of like uh, boat activities, Water sports are available. And then of course, um, Grand Turk, there's a little bit more of sightseeing there, but there's lots to do. It's very historic. And then Amber Cove in Dominican Republic, 
again, another beautiful destination. All of these are kind of our private islands. So there's a lot of rela relaxing. There's a lot of um, entertainment. We have a lot purposely built right there to make it very convenient for you. Um, if you just want to stay and, and check out, you know, shopping, the eateries, it's very easy to get on and off the ship. And again, lots to do. So very Caribbean feeling here on this destination. Sounds fantastic. Oh, that's it. Um, that's it for the Caribbean. Yeah. Anybody have any quick questions for the Caribbean before we move on? Let me see. Oh, hold on one second. I've, I got to figure out how to, uh, um, yeah, I got to figure out how to un unshare my screen since I changed my um, formatting here. <laughs> ah, um, if you have a question, just shoot, shoot. All right, Jim, I see you. There we go. All right, I have two questions. A number of the cruise lines are offering various incentives now, free beverage packages, tips and gratuities. Are any of these things being offered? When you travel with STAR, we book um, group space. So we don't have the ability to capture the current uh, packages or promotions, but we have our own package um, promotion. And that's the onboard credit that you get um, along with, Chris, help me, help remind me um, what else that we include. Which credit you get? Oh, you're still on mute. Let me. There we go. Yeah, the one hundred dollar onboard credit. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So you can you get that with us no matter when you book. So there's no sort of rush to um, to book the you know the promotions that they're you know that they're promoting right now. That would be for individuals. We have group space. Is that one hundred person or per cabin? It's one hundred dollars per cabin. Okay, so that would not cover beverage package or. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, all right. The other question: Are you permitted to take wine on board? Great question, and I know Grace knows the answer to this. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are. Um, it is a specific amount per person, but yes, you are allowed to bring some wine on. Thank you. You're welcome. Lisa, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry about okay. that. Um, no problem. I'm brain fog there for okay. a minute. Um, speaking of your group space, so do you get to pick where you want to be in the ship or is it confined to like, like one area of that ship, your group space? Great question. So what we'll do is we'll block um, cabin categories and, oh. we, and we'll, um, you know, we will give prices for each of those cabin categories, but Chris um, can go over with you. Those cabin categories may be in different locations on the ship. So she'll go over with you what your preference is. Am I right, Chris? And then you can make specific location requests. She's saying yes, but she's still on mute. You just really want to be on mute, Chris. <laughs> she doesn't want to yeah. participate. <laughs> now, I go on to Carnival and I pick your cabin. So whatever's available, you know, for me to choose from. Okay, thank you. Yep. I, I have a question. Sure. Um, the Lido Marketplace, that is all buffet style. Yeah. Um, how are they, how's Carnival handling the large group of people going into a buffet style dining? because I think before there were restrictions when cruises went out again, but has there been any changes made to this? It's a served buffet. So yes, it's still a the buffet. buffet specifically. Right, it's no. a served buffet now. So they'll actually be serving you. Okay, so there's no hands grabbing into uh, no. the food or hand or handling tongs, things like that. No. Okay, all right, well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. That was a good, good question. question. That, that is a good, good. question. <laughs> That's we 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 count on you guys to ask us these good questions. Um, let's see. All right, let me go back. We're gonna um, start with Bermuda. Okay. 
All right, this one leaves August 31st, six days and five nights, very well priced. We're gonna be sailing aboard the Carnival Magic. And um, I'm gonna skip ahead, we'll come back, but <laughs> what's really cool about Bermuda is um, you get to spend an overnight here and, and Grace will talk about that, but it's one port, but you really get to know that port really well. And you really feel like you're, you know, um, having a sort of separate vacation while you're in Kings Wharf. So talk to us about the Carnival Magic. Okay. So I won't go as crazy detail as I did in the legend because <laughs> I can see what time it is. Um, well, the Magic is another beautiful ship. She's a different class of ship. She was inaugurated in 2011. Her, um, she is 130,000 tons. So she's, she's a bit bigger um, than the legend, but again, a lot of the same uh, great offerings that we have on board. Some extra things here you'll see. We're very, we're big foodies at Carnival. The food is phenomenal. Um, we have some other extra fun things that we do on board. A lot of this is, is, is very similar to what I just talked about on, on Legend. Um, but you can see we do some like fun extra games like Lip Sync Battle. We have Sports Square, so lots of activities. We want to keep you super busy. So the magic is actually going to be your, your floating resort to Bermuda. And then if we'll just look at the itinerary, um, as Sandy mentioned. So this is exciting too. Um, this is the first time we're gonna have a ship sailing out of New York since 2019. Um, and I am a New Jersey, New York girl. Uh, so I am thrilled to have this option here. It's gonna be really, really exciting. There's nothing like sailing from New York, sailing past the Statue of Liberty. It's really something breathtaking. And as Sandy said, this itinerary is great because you have the fun day at sea to kind of get you settled, get you excited, you know, unwind, really kind of get into the, the vacation vibe. And then you're overnighting in Kings Wharf, Bermuda. So this is actually um, at the Naval Dockyard. So if you've never been to Bermuda before, there's a couple of different ports. Hamilton is kind of like the main shopping hub, but the island itself is so, so small. So we, we pull in at the Naval Dockyard in Kings Wharf. It is absolutely beautiful. There's so much to see and so much to do right at the terminal. Um, you know, it's that typical like pink sugar sand beach. There's lots of great spaces to go. Um, there's lots of tours. You can get on and off the ship, which is one of the best parts. I think, Sandy, about doing an overnight is that you're not restricted to come back at any time. You can get off, enjoy, come back, take a shower, go out to dinner, you know, stay out super late, enjoy the nightlife, come back on the ship. So it, we make it really easy for you. Um, and there's so, so much to do in Bermuda. Um, there's so much history there. And of course, it's an island. So you're going to have a lot of the offerings with um, sailing, uh, scuba, glass bottom boats. There's different dives if you like to, to dive, snorkel, swimming. There's aquariums, there's Segway tours. Um, of course, lots and lots of shopping, lots of restaurants. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Does anybody have any questions about the Bermuda trip? Oh, Roseanne's waving her hand. You just have to unmute yourself. Uh, what kind of transportation is available from Kings Wharf to get to Hamilton? Is that a me question, Sandy? Yes, I'll, I'll let you take that one, sorry. Okay, that's fine. So there's a lot of different options. There's taxis, there's private cars, um, there's buses. You can you can rent a car. I mean, it's very it's a very very small island to get around. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about Bermuda? And I laugh when I say buses because I actually took the bus. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes. I I'm a, uh, I, I vote for bus I, transportation. No, I know, but it's just so funny when you're like, I'm going to try this like public transportation, and it was just so much fun. It was so nice. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> All right, we're going back. Let's see where are we going. We're going to the Bahamas. Yeah, we're going to the Bahamas on July 31st, and uh, it's an eight day, seven night trip. This one's a little bit more pricey. It's right in the heart of the summer, um, but there's you know benefits to traveling in July, maybe for all those teachers or for those of you who want a summer vacation. And we're sailing on the Carnival Legend. 
So um, you know how Grace feels about the Carnival Legend. She loves it. I feel that way about all the ships. <laughs> That's <laughs> about all of them. <laughs> oh, being with Carnival so long, I've inaugurated so many of our ships. So I, yeah. I, have, nice, I have nice experiences with all of them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so again, it's the, the legend. So we're sailing from Baltimore again, a nice close port. Um, two fun days at sea to give you a great opportunity to explore the ship, kind of chill, relax, get in the vacation vibe. And then we're going to have three ports back to back. So the first one being Nassau. Um, very popular cruise destination, lots of fun, lots of shopping. If you want to skirt, I think we have some shots, don't we, of the next Yes, slide. hang on, let's see if we can. There we Sorry. go. Uh, well, yes, Princess Keys. Out of order. Yeah. But we, so we already did Princess Keys too um, when we did our first port from the legend sailing. Um, but a lot of the things that I said, you know, obviously lots of beach activities, so many fun shore excursions you can do, um, like kayaking, snorkeling, glass bottom boats, the stingrays, all that fun stuff. Um, and then Nassau, it's very well known. It's a big cruise port. Um, probably if you've ever sailed before, you've probably been there and there's always something new, you know, so there's a lot to do. It, you have the Junkanoo band, so it's a big Caribbean vibe, lots of excitement, um, absolutely beautiful, lots of history and culture there, so much to do, beaches, shopping, as I said, water sports, um, the Atlantis resorts there, we also do a shore excursion if you wanted to go spend the day at Atlantis, um, it's a little bit too far to walk from the ship, but it's really a great thing to do, you can go get a day pass, hang out there, you can swim with the dolphins, Lots and lots of fun to do. And again, it's for, for all ages, we really cater to. And then Freeport is the final port on this itinerary. Again, in the, in the Bahamas, uh, is off Grand Bahama Island. There is a really nice resort there. So if you're into gambling and you like casinos, you can go there, hang out again, get a pass for the day, really enjoy uh, the port. Also, it's beautiful. It's quiet. It seems like there, you know, there's a lot of beachy things to do. Again, if you like to just go hang out, go swimming, relax at the beach, you're going to find that. Um, it, there's Jeep tours, as I said, shopping, lots of history there too. Excellent. It's a great itinerary. Sounds awesome. Um, I'm going to jump right in. We'll, we'll come back if anybody has questions um, about the Bahamas trip, but let's jump right into Alaska. This is a biggie. Um, yeah. oh, a favorite every year, um, August 16th through 23rd sailing on the carnival splendor, which was just announced. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. Um, and you know, like we say, the best way to see Alaska is, is by cruise because you can use the, the ship as your sort of floating resort and get to see all these wonderful things. So tell us about the splendor. Yeah, so the Splendor is uh, her own class of ship. There's only one designed like her. Um, she was inaugurated in 2008, um, but she's had many, many, um, she's had dry docks and updates. So the ship looks beautiful. She's 113,000 tons. Um, so not as big as the Magic, kind of in between Magic and uh, the Legend, but again, lots of offerings, a lot of consistency throughout the entire fleet. A lot of these things that you've seen as well. Um, but let's just jump into the itinerary because that's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So if you've never been to Alaska um, or if you've been to Alaska, but never been on cruise to Alaska, it is a wonderful, wonderful way to experience everything. Um, obviously, we're going here to really enjoy just the scenery, the wildlife, the experience. The one thing that we do on board that I love is that we have um, naturists that come on board and we'll give talks kind of off the ship, you know, just telling you about what you're looking at, what you're experiencing. Um, and it's such a, it's such a great, great itinerary. So you can see here, we embark in Seattle, Washington. There's a fun day at sea. We cruise Tracy R. Fjord. We're in Skagway. Um, Juno, we'll see, we'll jump through here. So the first day you're sailing through Tracy Arm Fjord. The second day you're in Skagway. Um, it's a great little coastal mountain town. 
Um, it's beautiful. There's so much. It's, you know, there's a lot of like native um, culture there, fishing villages. There's so much to do. So you can actually do excursions to go see the fjord, zip lining. This is where you're going to see a lot of like those helicopter tours that you see people taking, landing on the glacier. Um, there's railroad um, adventures, dog sledding, gold panning. There's bike tours. Uh, lots and lots of wildlife, of course, and kayaking. So, you know, you can kind of experience this beautiful, beautiful destination in so many different ways on board. Um, Juneau, again, I think this is one of, uh, it's the capital city. There's a lot here. The one thing that I always think about in Juneau is I think about the whales. There's a lot of whale watching in this area. Again, the glaciers, the one that you probably heard about was Mendenhall Glacier. Um, you get on a seaplane, jeep tours, there's salmon bakes, fly fishing. Again, lots of great ways to see. Ketchikan, again, another beautiful destination, a lot of Native American culture. There's, um, you're gonna see a lot with the totem poles here. There's shows that you'll be able to go and really just immerse yourself in the culture. Uh, lumberjack and crab fests happen. Fishermen, there's tours. So if you're a fisherman and you like to fish, this is a great destination to do a lot of that. Again, you can see um, glaciers, uh, city tours, just so, so much to do. And then finally in um, Victoria, British Columbia, there's a lot of castles and city tours. Again, so much culture, so much history here. Um, we say it's a mild climate. You know, the one thing I think is great about Alaska, it's layered. I think that's the one thing that you'll keep when you pack, you'll be like, oh, it's chilly. And then like, as the day goes on, you get warmer and then you get chillier again. But it is, if you've never done it, it's it's such an amazing, amazing package. Yeah, this itinerary is fantastic. Um, you know, something to do every day for yeah. sure. Keeps you busy. You're going to be tired. <laughs> you sleep well. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so we talked about Bahamas and then we talked about Alaska. Alaska was the first um, cruise we talked about that has a fly component. So again, we'll take you from one of your star pickup, whatever star pickup point you select to the airport. And then once you, um, you know, with our tour director, and then once you land, uh, we will uh, take you to the um, to right to the ship, and uh, and and we'll do the same on the way home. So that that's what makes it really neat. Um, anybody have any questions on either Bahamas or Alaska? Uh, yes, I see a question. I see. Your uh, hand yeah, hand. which airport? Yeah, it, any different airport? You can pick a different airport or just uh, the same airport. Well, we will pick the airport for you. And what we do is we search for the best flights um, at the best, you know, that, that fits into the budget that we have set for the cruise. So normally for Alaska, we sail out of Newark. Um, and okay. is that right, Chris, that for this year we're set? Yeah. So we'll sail out of Newark for, um, for the Alaska cruise. And if, if at all possible, we'll do a nonstop flight if they're not available, you know, some, you have to match the times that the cruise is sailing. So if they're available, we'll, we'll go for the nonstop flight. If it's not available, we'll have to do a connection. Okay. Which airline is it? It depends. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. It depends. It might be United. It might be American. It could be Alaska. Okay. Um, it really depends. So you just, you get on a stop of a, of a star bus and the star bus take it takes you to the airport. Exactly. Yep. Okay. We take Thank care you. of everything. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. Sure. Um, great question. Any other questions? All right. We I have are... a good question. Oh, good. For a trip see. like Alaska, where you just said Newark, about how early do they leave? Because I'm just thinking that flight to Seattle in itself is a six hour flight, and then you have to connect oh, yeah. for a four o'clock cruise. We've had. We've had 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you know, pickups at, at the different pickup points, because if if there's a 6 a.m. flight and that's the only nonstop, we might pick that. That means you have to get there at four. <laughs> that means, you know, you do the math backwards there and sometimes we're picking you up at two or three. So it can be very early when you go to Alaska. I apologize in advance. It's a long day. No question about it. 
but you can sleep on the plane. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's well worth it. That's my favorite reason to get up in the middle of the night <laughs> to get on a flight to go on vacation. <laughs> right. There's way worse reasons to get up, yes. up during the night. That is not one of them. <laughs> but yeah, it's you know you got to get across the U.S. to hop on a cruise ship that leaves at three or four o'clock and. Um, or you have to be there by, I think you have to be there by one or something like that. So it is an early morning. It absolutely is. So we definitely pick you up when it's dark. All right. We're, we're, um, we're going to go right into Canada and, um, we're going to sail again aboard the Carnival Magic. This one sails, uh, from New York. It sails yep. from New York. Um, with three ports of call, St. John, Sydney, and Halifax. And um, do you want to talk about it a little bit more, Grace? Sure. So this is a beautiful week-long sailing, um, again, right out of New York. Uh, if you've never been to Canada on Carnival, it's really a great, great itinerary. It's so easy, so fun. Um, you get on the ship, Again, you have a beautiful fun day at sea, and then you arrive in St. John, New Brunswick. Um, such a beautiful, beautiful destination. Um, it's known for uh, the rising and the rising tides, where you can actually walk out onto the ocean floor at certain times of day. Hopewell Rocks is part of that as well. They have the reversing uh, rapids. There's so many fun tours here. It's just this beautiful coastal town. Um, the middle of St. John, they call it, uh, instead of going downtown, they call it uptown. So there's lots of shopping and you know you can go and get your souvenirs and stuff up there. But again, if you wanna get most immersed in the culture, there's so much to do um, with the Bay of Funday and St. Saint Martin. Also again, whale watching, lobsters, all the things you think of when you think of Canada. And then Sydney is actually a new port of call for us. We've, we've just added it this year. Um, so there's a lot of tours there. So it's gonna be a great destination to go. Again, you're gonna spend the next day there. Um, there's a lot of things to discover. There's a lot of heritage, beautiful landscapes. Um, so there's something that operates in Canada called the pink, uh, the big pink bus that you can kind of hop on and hop off and kind of tour at your own pace. So Sydney is going to be one of those ports as well that you can explore. And then finally, Halifax, um, which is another great destination that we've had. Um, I think we've been sailing to Canada since the 90s. So we really, we really have a beautiful partnership with our ports there, um, and they do a really nice job. So some of the beautiful things that you'll see in Halifax is Peggy's Cove. That's something that it's kind of known for, these beautiful lighthouses. Also, um, there's a great spot that you can just, seriously just step off the ship and there's lots of shopping and restaurants it's all a beautiful boardwalk kind of along the ocean um, and it's the home of the titanic museum as well so a lot of history there to to explore fun fact um can the, <laughs> the cruise to canada is our most popular sailing really yes it is we have the most people every year go on the cruise to canada so yeah I might be just jumping on one of these tours because I'm talking about it. Already. I, know. <laughs> I know, I know, I get it. All right, we're flying again. We're flying to Western Europe um, to visit three fabulous places, France, Spain, and Portugal. Um, we're going on September 1st. So this is a great end to the summer trip. Um, we're sailing from London and home from Rome, which is so cool. And we're sailing aboard the Carnival Pride, um, which is, I, you know, used to be right in Baltimore and now it's right. in Europe, which is so cool. And uh, we'll take care of the airfare and the airport transfers, like I said, and um, you get to be aboard this fabulous ship called the uh, Carnival Pride. Um, and um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about the itinerary. Yeah, so the Pride is actually sister ship to the Legend, so it's going to be very similar in build. Um, beautiful vessel, but again, this is just kind of your floating resort, uh, taking you to each of these amazing destinations, and there's so much. I think this itinerary is just so like chock full of everything, um, you know, and the beauty of cruising is that you pack and unpack once, and everything is just there for you, and it makes it really, really nice. 
um, especially, you know, just to kind of be able to experience so many different countries. So we start in London, um, which, you know, is a great port in itself to explore. Um, but you can head out to uh, your, it's Paris, Fun Day at Sea. We have two, two beautiful destinations in Spain, two in Portugal. Um, I'm sorry, three in Spain, two in Portugal. Um, and then you end in Rome and Chipotebecchia. So obviously, you know, some of the highlights that you're going to see and get to explore um, in each of these ports, there's so much history and there's so much to do as far as excursions. You can see here some of some of these beautiful spots, um, but you can kind of read through those. The, you know, the things that I think, um, like with Portugal, you think of the cable cars, great way to explore. Um, they have fun like toboggan rides, <laughs> beautiful gardens cooking, if you're into culinary, there's great experiences. It's very scenic, very breathtaking. Um, and then of course, Spain, all these ports have something a little bit different, um, but there's a horse ranch, there's trolleys, you're going to see flamenco dancers, something that, you know, we haven't seen yet um, on these, these itineraries. Um, also, uh, the best of lots and lots of scenes and lots of itineraries. This is actually very, this, this sailing is doing very well. Um, a lot of our guests are, are just loving this itinerary. Oh, it's a fantastic itinerary. I know, and how you end in Rome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <even> better. <laughs> amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And last but not least, is our Panama Canal cruise. And as of today, we have two cabins left. In wow. Group, yeah, in the group space. So um, I put this little picture on here, <laughs> limited space available. It's true. Um, so we're, we're sailing the Carnival Legend um, and we're going at the end of October, beginning of November. So right before the holidays will be a nice time to get away. Um, and this one is so cool because it sails all the way down to the Panama Canal right from Baltimore. So yeah. um, just, just excellent. Uh, we'll start it. Well, I'll let you take it away, Grace. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, I, and I agree with you. The thing that I think is so nice about this itinerary and why it's selling and there's only two cabins left um, in the group allotment is because it is a round trip. Typically any Panama transits that we do kind of end, you know, start in one port and end in another. So this is really beautiful. Um, it's, it's a long sailing. I think you get a lot. Uh, it's a journey sailing. So there's lots of extra activities and, and things that we do on board to kind of keep you busy. Um, so you can be as busy as you like or chill as much as you want. You get two fun days at sea again to an opportunity to kind of just chill and relax and, and get ready for vacation. Um, we're going to hit down to some Caribbean islands. Um, I don't know if you have the slides on those, but half moon. Oh feet. yeah. I'm just like, hold on. I just, I was looking at day, there's 15 days, right? And here's the price. Yeah. Like that's just, you do the math. I mean, that's crazy. It's, it's more money to stay home and go yeah. to the grocery store. I'm just like, food. I'm like, I'm stuck here and here. So yeah, yeah that's um, something to look at, you know, you know, everybody, you know, we get a little sticker shock sometimes, but what you get for your vacation dollar with carnival, you, you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. And like I just said, it's more money to stay home and yeah. feed your family. <laughs> But so this is great because you get a little bit of everything. So you're going to start in Half Moon Key, again, the private island that we have, that, that turquoise, beautiful water. If you just kind of want to chill and relax, this is a great spot to do it. You know, one thing that I didn't mention at, in any of these ports when I'm talking on the itinerary is the fact that you really, you don't even have to get off the ship sometimes. So that's also something to think about. Excuse me. I know I'm, just, I'm drinking my water too. Excuse me. Let me get a cough drop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking over right now. <coughs> so, um, so the Bahamas, you go right from the Bahamas to Ocho Rios, Jamaica, Ocho Rios, Jamaica, which is something that um, we haven't done yet, which is just a really cool port. Um, lots, very outdoorsy, um, your typical Jamaican landscape. Uh, and then uh, Costa Rica, which is, just, <laughs> these are just fantastic places and you get to see them all. Um, and then we'll do the Panama Canal and that's a partial transit. So um, 
we we enter and exit through the locks and you get to take um take an up close views right of the land <coughs> surrounding the canal so um just a really special experience that um is probably on a lot of your bucket lists um do you <laughs> grace are you are you in a I'm good back. spot no, you, she's back i'm so sorry i had to get a cough drop my son took all of them from my office so <laughs> oh no <laughs> all these zoom calls you know they make our throats dry um do you want to i can't do the panama canal justice because i have not cruised the panama canal it's on my bucket list um tell us about it a little bit there's nothing like it that you if you've never experienced it it's amazing with the, all the different locks that you go through. And we always joke, like make sure you get a cabin on an upper floor, because if not, you're seeing wall as <laughs> you go through the Panama Canal. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're out on deck, that you're getting to explore it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it is such a beautiful destination. It, we, sit, we go right through um, Cologne. It's like such beautiful scenery through it and then as you go through the transit it's just something it's a bucket list item yeah I don't know what you how you described it but I mean that it's I did it's, I described it as a bucket list item funny oh, you did? that's so funny <laughs> yeah it is it's it's like nothing else that you've ever seen you know you can you can watch it and you can watch documentaries on it and then until you get to like actually go through it and see the whole process it's really spectacular sounds fantastic Sounds fantastic. And then, of course, we go through Grand Turk, which we've talked about before on, on Turks and Caicos, part mm -hmm. of the Turks and Caicos mm -hmm. Islands. So um, let me just go back to the overview. So it is a fantastic itinerary, um, a good amount of time at sea for some fun days, and then um, lots of ports of call for you to get off the ship and, and see all there is to see. So again, two, two cabins left. I believe they're indoor cabins. Um, or inside cabin, sorry. Um, so I just wanted to recap before um, I stop sharing my screen and we talk a little bit about more some more things specifically, but um, all of 2022's cruise package includes the shipboard meals, a $100 per cabin onboard credit, uh, the star tour director, as long as there's 15 people, motor coach transportation to and from the pier and or the airport, airport transfers upon arrival, baggage handling and related gratuities for the stevedores and skycaps, and then um, uh, dining, dining evenings aboard the ship. Actually, this says two, but I think it's one to two, depending okay. on the sailing. Um, there is a deposit, a minimum deposit of $300 per person for all the cruises except Alaska and Panama, which are 425 and Western Europe, which is 450. Things that you need to know, taxes and fees are additional. And um, Chris can tell you what those are. When you talk to her, she can send you a sheet that has all of that listed mm -hmm. out. Onboard gratuities are $13.99 per person per day for dining and stateroom services charged right to your onboard account. So you don't need to worry about dollars here and dollars there. They're gonna charge you right on your, on your onboard account. Um, your passport must be valid for at least six months beyond the period of your stay, so keep that in mind. If you're thinking about traveling, now's the time to get your passport or your passport renewed. And um, we talked about the COVID vaccination uh, and the card required. So um, those are some key things that you need to know about traveling with us. And um, for those of you thinking about specific cruises, I'm going to now um, just review the seven cruises that we have to offer. And I'll tell you who's the tour director and how many travelers are booked so far. So if you want to jot some notes down, we'll start, we'll do this in the same order that I presented the cruises. We'll start with the Eastern Caribbean. That is October 15th through 23rd. The tour director is Rick Weiss. And we have nine travelers booked so far. Now keep in mind, um, that our catalog just hit, you know, last week, 10 days ago. Um, so we're just at the beginning process of booking. So um, this one has nine so far. Um, moving on to Bermuda, Bermuda, August 31st through September 5th, Lucille is the tour director for that cruise. And there are 12 people booked so far. 
Bahamas, July 31st through August 7th. Jean is the tour director. And we have four travelers booked on that one. Then we have Alaska on August 16th through the 23rd. And Howard is the tour director on that cruise. There are 12 travelers booked on that. Western Europe, September 1st through 11th, where Martha is the tour director. And we've got two folks on that. And then our Panama Canal cruise on October 30th through November 13th. Martha is the tour director and we've got 27 travelers on board with two cabins left. And um, I also wanna talk about travel insurance. So um, not to be sort of uh, forgotten, and this is at the sort of towards the end, but we do highly recommend travel insurance for lots and lots of different reasons. Um, whether it's COVID, your health, a parent's health, a child's health, um, work, whatever it is, we highly recommend travel insurance. We don't sell travel insurance directly to you for our cruise and fly programs. We, you can pick any travel insurance company that you would like. We recommend Aon Affinity. Um, this is a terrific company. Um, they're very strong. They're um, very well known. We've been working with them since the beginning of time that we've been doing this. And let me tell you, through COVID, with all the cancellations, they were fantastic. Um, so it just strengthened our relationship with them. They did all the refunds in a timely manner, and, and they did a terrific job of it. So when you do book um, you would give them our tour operator location for the discounted price. And um, you definitely want to purchase the plan within 14 days of your deposit at STAR. So um, I just wanted to spend a moment talking about tour protection. Um, Sylvia, did we answer your questions about the gratuities or would you like a little bit more detail on that? Oh, there she is. She's looking to, are you looking to- I'm unmuting, to I'm unmuting. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I used to cruise year, some years ago and uh, I think the, the gratuities are handled a little differently than when we used to cruise. We used to hand our, all our gratuities directly to our everybody, you know, but I, I think now it's handled a little differently. Uh, it's is it taken out of like your your credit card? You give your credit card to the um, somebody, and then they take it out of there. I don't know. It, it's I think it's a lot different than when Chris we went. or Grace. Do you want to answer Sylvia's question? Mm. Oh, Chris. Chris is on. Chris is on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have the prepaid um, already, but yes, it it is a little bit different. I know what you're talking about um, when you were just kind of put it in an envelope and hand it. Um, yeah, we used to do that years years ago now. Yeah. We've gone on a lot of these and that's yeah, so how we, we used to do it. We try to make it as easy as possible. Um, and it's pretty much a cashless system on board. So mm -hmm. what we do is we would just charge your credit card the, the per person per day for those gratuities to give to your cabin steward, maitre d', your service team, all right. of that. And they divide it. Um, okay. You know, sometimes guests choose to give additional tipping. We kind of, yeah, it's just a suggestion in the amount that we give. So, you know, it's like tipping anywhere else. If you, if yeah, you if enjoy you were, it. If you were to order a drink at the bar, you know, there's, you know, you would pay gratuity, you know, at that Automatically. Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. That, that answers my question. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions that um, we haven't covered? Go ahead. I see Roseanne has a question. Yeah, um, I have a question. Like, uh, you all stay on the on the ship, right? It because even if you get offshore, you come back, stay uh, at the ship overnight. There's no hotels involved. Correct. No okay. hotels involved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Question. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, uh, also, um. Oh, I lost my train of thought. What was I about to say? Oh, what what is the um, deadline for when you want to go to the payment when you want to go? Um, on that's a great question. So every cruise has a different deadline, and it's and it's is it Chris? Would you say is it usually final payment somewhere around a hundred days prior? 
yeah, somewhere around 100 days prior. Um, but we'll we'll tell you that, you know, based on the cruise that you're interested in. Um, once you express your interest, we would send you um, what, you know, what we call our sales information sheet. And that has all the different prices, all the inclusions, the deposit amount, the final payment amount, all the information we need, et cetera. That's kind of information central on that. So it's it's going to differ for each cruise. Okay. All right, Roseanne, let, Roseanne your turn. I think I'm on. I, I think I've unmuted. Um, with the Panama Canal, would, yeah, I don't is, know there, what is there a possibility? Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I can, yep. Uh, is there a possibility of them of you getting any more cabins? Oh, I it's not likely. Not likely. It's okay. not likely. I mean, we could have somebody cancel one of our cabins and we can switch it. Um, but we have tried, I you know, and and we're lucky right now that they haven't taken away the two unsold yeah. um, cabins that we have. <laughs> yeah. We're still waiting. We'll, we'll keep checking. Well, yeah, we will keep checking for sure. And, it, you know, that's something that you can work with Chris on. And if you really do want, want that um, cruise, Chris can call and see if she can get, you know, a dish, it might be a different cabin. It might be at a different price than we originally got, yeah. you know, but we can make it a part of our group. So it might not be, it might not, you know, fit into the exact cabin or prices that we already have, but we might be able to get it and then we can put it as a part of our group. So we should call. We should yeah. be able to call. Yes. Okay. Thank call you. Chris. Speaking I have a question. Yeah. Speaking okay. of calling, you said you only have two cabins left, but those are ca inside cabins, right? That's yes. So if you want something like a like a uh, with a balcony with a sea view, then you can't ask because you have to pay more. You can't ask for those cabins. So those cabins are not do you, uh, part of your group or it's how we, do you we had an allotment and we yeah. sold out of the allotment. So in our allotment, all we have left is our two inside cabins. Okay. Uh, uh, so if, if we are lucky enough to get additional cabins that are, let's say a balcony, if that's what you're looking for, we'll, yeah. we'll have to go outside our allotment. And if we can even get them, they will likely at, be at a much higher cost. Yeah, I understand how it costs. I just wonder whether, because you have certain reserved for you, but because in the booklet, you say you can't ask for those uh, sea view cabinets or uh, cabinets with balcony. So I'm just wondering whether this is a part of what you have left because of whatever you have is inside cabins, right? Yes, what we have left is inside cabins. We did have outside cabins. We have balcony cabins, but they are all sold out. Oh, okay. Okay. In our, in our allotment. In our okay, allotment. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, you are seeing now a picture of Chris and her phone number. So do a quick screenshot or write down her phone number. I have a feeling tomorrow is going to be a busy day <laughs> for her. So, <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, we do have a couple more minutes for questions. And then, of course, um, we will announce our gift card winner. Um, so any other questions? At this point, oh, you guys listen. Uh, may I have a comment? Sure. Okay. Is that uh, Martha? Uh, I worked uh, with a star on the uh, legend, uh, the Bahamas cruise this past uh, year. And uh, to clarify, I uh, was very impressed by the way that Carnival handled uh, the uh, boarding with the uh, proof of uh, vaccination. Uh, the staff was amazing uh, the, in, in, in every way. They're constantly uh, cleaning and uh, making sure that everyone is uh, being taken care of. They do, as uh, Grace said, said, they uh, refer to you as uh, from 
your um, your name. They call you by your name. Uh, everything is very organized, very personal. They have an app or they had an app, which was wonderful. You had all of the information on what was going on on the ship through the whole uh, cruise, uh, even the menu uh, for uh, dining. So it was a wonderful experience and I highly recommend Carnival. I'm very, very happy and excited to be able to support the Panama Canal cruise. And hopefully the uh, Western Europe goes well because that has a gorgeous, wonderful itinerary. They, they both do. And I'm very familiar in general with the ports. I, I, I was at, at the Panama, never through the, uh, the actual uh, uh, you know, cruising, but uh, the rest of the ports, especially in uh, Europe, they're wonderful ports. They and um, whoever travels with Martha has the benefit that she's multilingual. So <laughs> she can help navigate through Spain and, and Portugal because there's a lot of Spanish spoken in Portugal as well as, um, you know, on the Panama Canal cruise. And Martha's our only tour director that has um, sailed since um, we re since Carnival restarted ten months ago, so or nine months ago, yeah. Yes, and it was very well handled. Everything. Thank you. Perfect. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, let's see. I. It's time for a gift card winner. So our gift card winner, dun da da da, is Sylvia Burt. Let's see, Sylvia's still on there. There she is. I, Here I am. Yay, Thank you are a $25 you. gift card winner. So Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I just booked a couple trips today almost. Well, <laughs> just about booked a couple trips. Not the cruises yet, but All right. uh, I was talking right. to Deb. I was talking to Deb today. That is so a funny. Couple, couple All right, good. <laughs> I will tell Deb to take $25 off one of those trips that you booked. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's really funny. That thank, is you. Really funny. Thank, thank you. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, okay. I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you our next tour Tuesday is on March 1st. Um, and our topic is fly trips. Chris Corcos will be yeah. back. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about four fly trips that we're offering this year. And those fly trips are America's Canyonlands. Colorado train adventure from Dublin to London and Italy, Florence, Venice, and Rome. So America's Canyonlands, Colorado trains, Dublin to London and Italy. Join us uh, on March 1st. Um, any final questions or anything for our expert, carnival expert Grace um, this evening? Oh, you guys are terrific. You're a great audience. Um, thank you so, so much to Grace. Um, you have graced us with your presence. Uh, thank you. This is so fun. And again, I apologize for my, my choking. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no need to apologize. Um, we'll have you back again because this is such a well-attended program. So. so thank you so much. Um, thank you for Chris Corcos for joining us. And thank you to all the tour directors. Uh, for joining us. And especially thank you to our travelers. Um, we just love having you here on Tour Tuesday. We love sharing this information with you. We love seeing your faces and we look forward to booking you on travel. So thanks everybody and have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.